All right, here we go. Mob James, welcome back to Vlad TV. Hey, hey, good to be here, Vlad. Good it's to been be a while. Here. It's yes, been a, it's been some months. Yeah. You know, yeah. We, we were toughing it out through the pandemic, slowly coming out of it. Man, that is it's been rough during the pandemic too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I keep my grandson in the house and he he run around playing the game talking to himself. Um uh, <laughs> so it's taking a toll on both of us. You know, I I go buy him I had to go buy a swing set. I had to go get him a jumper to the swimming pool just to keep him busy. Mm -hmm. So it's just basically me and him at home, you know what I'm saying? Trying to stay away from all the crowds. I feel you. Is the mom or the dad trying to take him anytime soon? No, they he... both they both incarcerated. Oh, dad, both got, up. dad got 17 and my daughter be home in October. October, she come home. So I'm prepared for her. Um, She'll have a car, and she's going to stay. I already got a plan. She's going to stay with me okay. for three months. That's our first. Good. So she's going to have to work that three months trying to find a job. she have a car. She don't have no excuses. she get a job. Uh, she worked for six months, get her paychecks, her money up. She looked for her place, and then I know she's ready to take her son. There you so go. So I got at least another year with him. Okay. After she she come home. There you go. There you go. And how's the show doing? The Gangster Chronicles. Gangster Chronicles is doing good. It's doing good. Um, we just feel the obligation with Black Effect, and we negotiating another deal with them. Okay. Shout out to Charlemagne. Way way more money than we <laughs> we, we started <laughs> before, but good. Yes, yeah, great. It's great, man. Okay. And Reggie Wright is he coming back to the show? I mean, number one, is he out of the hospital at this point or no? Uh, the last I seen. I haven't talked to him. He oh. got a different number, but I go through John to talk to him from Bomb first. Okay. And uh, he keep me updated. Uh, Reggie done did uh, maybe two, three episodes with Bomb first. But, you know, I didn't really see him doing that. I wonder why. I question why. Um, I'd rather see him heal and get himself together and then come back and not let people see him at his worst. Okay, so is he still in the hospital or is he out of the hospital? He's in a rehab right now. Aha. Uh, the last update I had was he was having problems with his 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 limbs, his legs, and his hands. COVID's a motherfucker, especially a when motherfucker. you're uh, when you're heavy. Yeah. But when you're heavy, uh, you know, like I had mentioned a while ago, that was my uh, you know reason to start losing weight. You right. know, I lost about twenty pounds and I kept it off. And you know what I saw is people that were heavy that got hit with COVID, had it real bad. Man, you I know, cried. And even died sometimes. Right. I cried when I seen a picture of him. Um, I knew what Reggie looked like, but he looked like Tom Hanks. Remember when Tom <laughs> Hanks got stranded on that beach? <laughs> right. And he had the ball and all that shit, and he grew all the beard? He looked it, he looked it different, and that kind of hurt my feelings that it really, it really took him there. Yeah. But, you know, I lost a little cousin through oh. COVID. Yeah. She almost lost her daughter and her grandson, her grandchild. So, you know, I just thank God it ain't hit my house. Yeah. You know, well, I feel you. Well, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Okay. Charleston White. Right. So uh, last week, a video started to circulate. Right. Of an interview that you did with Charleston. Right. In Texas. Right. And the video that was circulating looked like it was almost like a like a hidden video. Like it wasn't like the main camera. It was like someone's phone in the corner or something. That was his. That was his. Right. Okay. So so let's go into the whole story. Now, you know, you live in L.A. Why were you out in Texas to begin with? I, I, I went to Texas because Unc, which is Han, who Charleston worked with, called me and asked me would I come and do an event for the kids. Uh, they, they was at a campsite. And I think they had 51, 45 kids. So me being passionate about what passionate about what I'm doing, I said, yeah. So I jumped in my car and I went to Texas for that reason. Now he asked me would I do the podcast show when I come down there. Oh, no problem. I'm cool. It felt kind of funny. Not not him, but you know, wherever I go. I'm prepared. I'm I'm ready for whatever. I'm going to Texas. Right. You know what I'm saying? So um I'm already prepared for it. Uh I get down there. Um 
we start doing this show, I get a text on my phone. And when I get the text on my phone, it's my boy that's with me. And he telling me that Charleston got a pistol on on his right side in the chair. I ain't worried about that. I got my pistol on the, on my hip. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I'm like, okay. So I lean back and I look over at Charleston. I don't see his phone at the time. So people start calling in and saying, y'all live. So Unc is looking at his phone. He don't, he don't say, turn it off, whatever. So we doing the video. So, I mean, the show. So now they just start getting belligerent. Like, hold up, homie, I'm trying to, I'm talking to you. Now, mind you, I had two previous conversations with Charleston White about bashing the Bloods and the Crips. And I'm, I'm a, the first time it was, okay, homie, what you doing ain't right, yada, yada. I let it go. We supposed to be good. He went right back into it. So after he said, fuck Monster Cody, fuck uh, Nipsey, I, I, made it, I reached out to him again. And I, I pretty much explained to him that, you know, you're doing more harm than good than you what you're saying. You think it's good to bash and whatever, but they kids could be watching this. And you calling them dope fiends and died in the parks and all of this shit, you're wrong. And I'm passionate about it because I lost my brother. I lost my cousin. You know what I'm saying? So we went from there. He's like, oh, all right. Now, I was emotional when I'm getting at him because I'm I'm more mad than anything. Because when people ask me about Charleston White, yeah, I'm, I deal with Charleston White. Yeah, we, we work with them, our podcast, we link them, whatever. How can you work with this dude? And And that was one of my reasons to get at him. The other one is I used to be a blood. I used to be a gang member. So it wasn't about... Uh, Bloods and Crips, my point to him was, you bashing on somebody that you don't even know. If anybody should be mad at anything, it should be me. I lost my brother by the homies. So I should be the main one mad, but I'm not mad and I'm not putting everybody in one basket, the Bloods and the Crips for my situation. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I just I just thought it was reckless and when I got down there, he did all of this, yada yada, and he really made me mad. He, I mean, he made me mad. And when he stood up, you know, I'm paying attention to the whole scene. Now he's sitting over here by his gun. I got mine on my hip. I ain't tripping. So now I'm knowing why he talking the way he talking. So when he got up and walked away from the chair and he was going at it, that's when I stood up and I met him. And now we're face to face. You know what I'm saying? And I asked him a question. Just I, t- I asked him one thing. Just tell me you want it. And I wouldn't have got no stripes from touching Charleston. I didn't go down to Texas to touch Charleston. He's making it seem like L.A. got a problem with Texas. California don't have a problem with Texas. Gangbangers don't, bloods are crips, not that I know of, have a problem with Texas. Texas ain't did shit to us. You know what I'm saying? So that narrative, he needs to knock it off. He needs to stop trying to make it it's the bloods and crips of this and that. Uh, they all broke. They all, you know, stop talking about the dead. It's, it's very disrespectful. And and I felt like, you know, it's, it's, it's not on me. It's in me what I used to be. You know what I'm saying? And I took pride in what I used to be. And I kind of like felt like this dude got to stop. You know what I'm saying? Because he ain't only disrespecting them, he disrespecting me. But if you fuck with me, stop disrespecting me. I'm not a gangbanger, but you know what I was. You know I was in that life. And for, for a person not to live in California up under our laws, our rules, You had no right to speak on it. Okay, so let me ask you a question, Uh and this is and this is serious. All right, you have two grown men with pistols on them, right? And you say 
let me know if you want it. Yeah. Knowing that he's armed, knowing that you're armed. Right. The ramifications of these of this situation escalating is potentially deadly. Only if I had the intent to pull my pistol. Well, he has a pistol as well. His pistol was in the chair. He done got up and walked away from the seat. Okay, so he's away from his gun. Yeah, when I got close to him. So now okay. the pistol right, got it. thing is out of there. Okay, got it. Right, because he's a relative, you know, he's he's physically smaller than you. So, you know, Very, not to say that small guys can't knock out big dudes, but, I, but you know, but, right. you know, from the outside looking in, he, he's smaller than you. You're bigger than him. You have a pistol. He does not. Right. So chances are it won't escalate into a more serious situation but then again there's other people in the room right and texas is one of these states where you know you could go through a drive through and get a, a carry permit <laughs> you right. know what i mean like everyone's right. got guns in texas unlike unlike in la where, right. where a carry permit is very hard to get if almost impossible so by you asking him that and if he say yeah i want it what would happen next uh ain't no telling uh charleston during the interview, he said, I get the ATF. I, if you touch me, you fuck with me, I'm going to send you to jail. That was something that was sticking in the back of my mind. It was kind of funny the way he was saying it, but I thought about that. You know, I'm way in Texas. Now, and if he got all these Congress people and everything else, I'm up shit creek. If well, I if I do, yeah, I mean it's not just Congress people. I mean it's just basic laws. If you assault somebody, right, you'll go to jail. Well, right. <laughs> if if it would have came to that, then I had to deal with the consequences because I I would have felt that I was in the right because I felt that he was being disrespectful. Okay. So as two grown men, let's accept the consequences. Why would we bring the law into our situation? I'm not going to pull a pistol out and touch Charleston. That was not my intent. My intent wasn't to go there and rah, rah, rah with Charleston. My intent was to conversate with the brother and, and just, okay, now we on this topic. Why do you do that? Why do you say wound to wound? This is how I feel about it. And then he went into Charleston White, Cat Williams or whomever he is. Rat Williams is what he Rat Williams yeah. or whatever. So... I didn't. I didn't expect that. Well, I know Charleston White. He's been on my show twice. He's right. actually he was on the Gangster Chronicles as well. Yeah. Right? right. So it's not like this is a stranger to anyone here. We right. uh, we all know him. You we, know him. I know him. You guys know each other. Right. Et cetera. Et cetera. Uh, you know he he's very opinionated. Right. And he's not scared to to say his opinion. You know sometimes he goes back and you know decides to change his point of view sometimes not right uh and you know he's he's made a name for himself by by doing what he does um you know i i hate to see what happened between the two of you i did too yeah because i know you and i've never seen you even get annoyed really never. <laughs> you know never. uh but you got to look at it like this though vlad i feel strongly about what i was being a gang member. I was mm -hmm. a gang member. And all of us are not fortunate to get out of our situations like me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Some of us don't have that and can't get that phone call. Man, I got something for you. Would you love to do it? All of us don't got that. Um, we're so stuck into fighting ourselves, at, at some point we'll get it. Well, we'll stop. But, you know, it don't take a Charleston White for us to see, and some of the points that he make are right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He makes some valid ass points. But when you get the ranting and talking reckless, you lose the point. Right, because this is someone who spent a lot of time in the prison system. He committed a murder and had to pay the consequences. No, he ain't spent no, no. Charleston White went and, and he was with his friends that committed a murder. He went to jail, did seven years. Everybody mm -hmm. else went on to do 15, 17 years. Seven he years got out in seven. Seven years still a lot. As a juvenile. Yeah. Uh, he had his record seal or whatever. Whatever the case, I mean, that's their life. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I really can't voice my opinion on how he lived his life. Yeah. And this is what I'm trying to tell him. Bro, you, you were a crip at one point. It didn't work for you, so now you're against and bashing. You, what your crimes was Crips. 
your partners, still today your partners, but not even to speak on the person that you're mad at, you put all the bloods, all the crips, and even the dead in your situation. You shouldn't do that. Well, what happened? Well, I mean, the interview went on. I mean, both of you guys stood up, you know, you got in his face, and then at one point both of you sat down, right? I sat down and then after I turned my head around and I felt he was being so disrespectful, me knowing me, let me get up and leave. I don't even want to, you know, I don't want no parts of this and I don't want people to see me at this point. So I got up and walked away from it. Told him I can't, I am not finna do this shit. And I walked away and I left. Which honestly was the mature thing to do. Yeah. You know, some people are gonna say whatever they're gonna I don't, say. I'm not worried about what and, people say. And who black. cares? Because yeah. at the end of the day, both of you left that situation without anybody hurt, right? without anyone arrested, uh, without any property being broken or, right. or people around you, you know, being involved in Man, something. And I went outside to the trunk of my car, made me a drink. <laughs> Sit out there and waited till they finish their show. And, you know, I kick back. The next day I see Charleston at the campsite. Okay. And I went over there and approached him. Hey, baby, what's going on? You good? Just to show him I'm not, I ain't on no whole shit. I ain't tripping. Yeah. We went, we went where we went and that's it. I'm done with that. Uh, he helped me start the fire for the kids and shit. They, nobody in Texas knew how to start a fire. Mama comes to nigga. I know how to start a fire. <laughs> So I started the fire, Charles with his assistance, and that was it. So the next day, I'm, oh, Charles is doing video, fuck my James, whoop the whoop whoop, and all this other shit. Wait a minute. I just shook this dude's hand and just said, you all right? He said, yeah. Now we on, I ain't even thinking about yesterday. I'm thinking about, we working with these kids now. We at the campsite, mm -hmm. 45, 50 kids. So I wasn't even tripping off of it. And then he just went into, oh, y'all motherfuckers coming up here to check me? Man, I, if I wanted to check you, me checking you, I'd have had to touch you to check you. Fuck a conversation. Mad as he made me, I, I didn't check him. I didn't get him. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't, I didn't feel... Charleston as a threat, and he shouldn't have felt me as a threat because we have we have conversated many times. You know what I'm saying? So what he did with this video and 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 putting it out here going live when he's doing his own his podcast, he over here being sneaky and shitty with this with his phone. You know what I'm saying? To me, that was disrespectful. Why is you doing some shit like that? And I'm on your podcast. This how y'all treat y'all guests. And then now you want to get loud and don't want me to speak. And it wasn't even worth it, Vlad. It wasn't even worth it. Yeah. I mean, although when you are being, when you are on a podcast, you have to assume it's all being filmed. You know, I do assume it's being not, filmed. You know, I mean. Well, let me look around here. You got some. <laughs> you got a that's what I should. You got a camera pointing right at you here. Shit, Two exactly. cameras, actually. And that's what I had then. <laughs> right. So wouldn't it be appropriate out of respect to say, my guy over here got a camera, he's filming, but for his own personal use. I'd have been like, okay, cool. Even if Charleston did that, okay, cool. Yeah. So don't say at the end of the day and get on a video and say, ha, 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 me and my James got you. How, how we get you? We yeah. planned this. And I want everybody to know, how in the fuck would I plan some, something like that? I, I don't. I ain't got time to play. So... Have you guys talked after you last saw each other? Yeah, uh, yesterday he called me, and he apologized. Okay, and that's and good. He, yeah, and I accept his apology. Um, he felt that I was out there, and Ray Sean Raymond Washington daughter was there to set him up. Set you up for what, bro? Uh, some other some other guys came out, and. You know, with my conversation with them, it was like, okay, they feel the same way pretty much as I do. Now, I didn't see them coming to plot to get Charleston because they would have came to the podcast show. Mm -hmm. They knew I was going to be at the show talking to Charleston. So they would have came that night. Unfortunately, they came to the campsite. 
I don't see them coming to the campsite with just them two to try and do something with Charleston. That would have been totally disrespectful. So I didn't see them, and I didn't. They didn't come in across to me like that. You know, he was from. Uh, I don't know if he won his name out there, but you know, he seemed like a, a cool brother. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we chopped it up at the. I did a, uh, a interview with Tap In. He went when I was leaving. He was coming. We conversated. His little bro did his little video thing. I didn't know they was going to use their videos to go after Charleston or whatever the case would have been. I ain't into the politics shit of it. You know what I'm saying? So uh, at the end of the day, everybody's saying is they doing this for this and Charleston was doing this to get a grant. I don't care about none of that. My purpose was to go and talk to the kids. And I did that, whether me and Charleston had an issue or not. I went to that campsite. I talked to them kids. Uh, Saturday night, stayed late Saturday night, and got on the freeway at one o'clock in the morning and came home. You know what I'm saying? That's and and that was about the extent of it. Okay, so now the two of you are are okay at this point. I, I was okay right after <laughs> it. Right after it happened, Vlad, yeah. I, I I went outside, popped my trunk. We had a drink, and I'm sitting there drinking. I'm like, man, I can't believe this dude. <laughs> so everybody hit me, saying, man, I see you live. You okay? You okay? What you mean I'm okay? Yeah, I'm okay. What what you talking about? Right. So, man, you gotta watch them Texas cats. Man, I I didn't have I didn't feel like them Texas cats was finna come at me and then be whatever. But if so, I was ready for it. Yeah. Wherever I go, I'm I'm I ain't gonna underestimate nobody and nowhere I go, no place I go. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna carry my pistols because I'm going out of state. I'm I'm in Texas. So I don't know if I got to shoot a rattlesnake. I'm I'm ready, <laughs> you know. So that's all it was. I didn't mind ten and my shit wasn't for Charleston White because now I'd be disrespecting him, which is on. I'd be disrespecting him. I'd be disrespecting Dewberry. Those are good people. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So no, that wasn't. It's over. All right. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad uh, it is over, and I'm glad there were some apologies that were said, and and nothing physical happened. Because, like I said, I know the both of you. Uh, you know, so watching it was like I just kind of just rolled my eyes, and I was like, okay. <laughs> you everybody. Just, I even talked to you afterwards, <laughs> right, man? But it's been a long time since somebody took me to that place, to where I feel that I might have to do something to you. Or that I just have to show you I ain't playing with you. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I gave him the opportunity to say if he wanted or not. Well, when is the last time you actually physically touched somebody? Uh, three months ago. Three months ago. At a stove. I was not expecting that answer. Yeah, three months ago. Um, this... I don't know who they is, but he was talking crazy to me and uh, telling me I better fucking move, get the fuck out of his way, yada, yada. I'm pulling in, and he hopped out of his car telling me, don't you see me fucking, wait a minute, hold up, partner, you don't even know me to be talking like that. And uh, he was pulling out, I'm coming in, and after he did that, wait a minute, you don't know me? And I'm, I'm going to give a woo Man, let me tell you something, dude. I'm gonna beat your motherfucking ass out here, yada yada, and and all of this. So the guy that is pushing the cart, man, come on, man, y'all y'all grown man, and y'all out here like, oh man, this dude is woo woo. So I can't take my eye off of this cat, and he just like fucking. Phew. Next thing you know, he didn't have a throat. Mm. He didn't have a throat. I just grabbed him by my throat, by his throat. My grandson in the back seat of the car, <laughs> talking about paw 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 paw, and uh. <laughs> I let the man go. He went dangling, did shaking, and got in this shit and just continued to leave, which he, that's what he should have did. There you have it. There you have it. Well, uh, you mentioned Monster Cody, uh, yeah. who recently passed away. Right. Uh, this was someone I've been wanting to interview forever. Uh, right. In fact, I read his book. Mm -hmm. like Fascinating. Maybe 20-something years ago. It was probably the first gang gang member 
you know, biography that I ever read. He he was mentioned. There's a there's a book that was written uh, about him, and then there was a book that he wrote himself. I, yeah. I read both, and it was really it almost started my journey of interviewing Crips and Bloods and so right. forth. Uh, and we've been trying to interview him for years. We never really came close because right. he was always like in and out of prison. We right. would talk to like his son or someone claiming to be his son or something, and it never ultimately happened. And then I found out that he was he was dead uh, right. a few a few months ago. Did you actually know him? No, I never. I never really. No, no. I I know of him like all of us do. We know of each other. Uh, you know. It's, it, to me, it's disrespectful to exploit the dead and then to speak on the dead the way these people do. You know what I'm saying? In our days, we didn't do that shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, it didn't matter if he was a blood or crip or whatever. You know, the man is gone. So I find it disrespectful for anybody to, to speak fucked up on him like that. You know, and, you know, I didn't know Nipsey. Mm-hmm. And I find it fucked up for for people to you know our own people to speak the way we speak toward each other. So it, it's just, it was just it's just disrespectful when it gets to me. I haven't I haven't gang banged or said Paru in 19 years. You know what I'm saying? But right here, it hurts because here we are. We got a lot of brothers such as myself trying to get out of this situation, and we all know it's hard. Some of us take the selling drugs to just to, to try to get out of our situation. And then to our demise, we wind up back in prison. You know what I'm saying? Some of us are not strong enough to hold the cocaine in our hand without opening our hand and testing that shit or fucking with it. Here it is, 2021. And some of some of us experiencing trying to sell drugs to get the fuck out of where we at and we it's 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 harder than what people think it is well yeah i mean monster cody had an interesting life Uh, he was something else uh, you know from what i understand at one point um he was cross-dressing he was was picked up as you know dressed like a woman Mm -hmm. um you know and you know i remember having a conversation with someone about this about how you know when you have people who are who are gay or bisexual and they spend a lot of time in prison you sometimes wonder whether you know that's a place where they just feel comfortable you know expressing that because there's you know it's a it's a society where it's just men well <laughs> you know what i'm saying i'm like this vlad with with you and anybody that man is gone i i really don't care what he was yeah I knew, and and I I felt the same way he did when, you know, he believed in what he was. And he represented what he was to the fullest. That's the only thing that, that I would call him. Now, if he was here, it could be something different. If I can get in front of the camera with him like this, say, man, you used to whoop whoop, or you did whoop whoop. Fair enough. You know what I'm saying? Fair enough. Well, I mean, this is not rumors. This is actual police, I know, police reports but and it, everything it, else like it that. It could yeah. be, but yeah. I know... And what I what I've heard from him is, and this is from some of the homies, that the dude was with the business. Right, he was a a tray, right? Yeah, and and you got a lot of guys out there that's like that. But at his age, trying to get out of certain you know situations, but it's just not that easy. Yeah, no, I think he was institutionalized so early. I mean, he started going in Very as early. a kid, and you know. Like I said, I read the book, and it's been some years, but, you know, you get out, shoot some people, go back in, do whatever in prison, get out, shoot some more people, come back prison in. Prison is you know, It's yeah. the story of the majority of us. Yeah. That's our life. Yeah. Well, rest in peace, Monster Cody. You know, yes, he, he was tied to the, you know, to the Shug story, to the Tupac story yeah. somewhat. I mean, apparently uh, there was an article I read a long time ago. It might have been like Vibe or whatever. He, he, he did an interview saying that... Um, he was locked up next to Suge, and Suge told him that the you know that the shooter, Tupac shooter, was Orlando, and he right. was I think the first person to actually go on record and actually say that. Right. You know, um, and you know, years later, all that was right. clearly revealed. I mean, although we're not sure if it was Orlando, it was clearly we're sure. in that car. We're sure. Well, not exactly because 
there was four people in the car, only one person still alive. And only one person had the nerve to shoot. And that was that was the hitter. That's that's the one that was with the business. That's the one that didn't give a fuck, but I gotta get him. He was the I gotta get him guy. And you know, he, he his reputation preceded him. The little dude died doing what he do best, shooting at people. Yeah. And Yeah, I mean he died in a shootout. Yeah. Right. Orlando. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the story and that's pretty much what's gonna go down in history. It's it's crazy. Yeah. Well, uh, there was a rapper named Indian Red Boy yeah. who got killed. Right. You know about this story. Yeah. I actually, uh, I saw like an edited version of, of the Instagram Live video right. where he's just with his homie on Instagram Live. And then, you know, like they, they basically, they block out, they put a big black box over his face. Right. And then you, you just hear the shooting and then you hear him still trying to talk. Right. After he's been shot, I think, 16 times? Yeah. I mean, number one, what area was he from? Was it Inglewood or? Well, he was from Inglewood, but apparently from 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 the streets, he was a limehood power rule. That's out of Compton. And he converted over to Inglewood. But, you know, one thing these cats got to understand, that social media, you know, people find out where you at. All they got to do is hit that location shit or whatever, they find out your location. And, you know, social media, these dudes with all this money and doing all this shit, putting it out there, they finding them and they getting killed. Um, what he did wasn't fashionable. He shouldn't have been up there with Nipsey shit, uh, disrespecting the dead, um, you know, but a lot of these cats don't understand with gang banging, it comes consequences. Right. Cause Allegedly, he was what spray painting over Nipsey yeah. Nipsey's murals and, yeah. and disrespecting him and, and stuff like that. And doing a video in front of it and all of that. What 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 point? What point do it make? And these little cats don't understand that. It don't make no sense to do that. That man dead. You know what I'm saying? However, they mourn over him, whether it's through a mural or or, or music or whatever. Let them people do that. Who am I to go and disrespect? The dead, it don't make no sense. That man can't fight back. So to put it on on, on video and do all of that shit, it was just out of line. But, you know, they just don't understand the consequences, the consequences behind the things they do. Um, did it have anything to do with being a gangbanger? From his point of view, fuck Nipsey Hussle or whatever, but it's it's not a game banging thing because you had Bloods and Crips mad at that situation. Yeah, well, I mean, he was just twenty one years right. old. I mean, I'm in my forties. You're in your fifties. Like that's less than half of our age. Black, they dying out there at fourteen. They yeah. dying out there at fifteen years old. She's yeah, getting shot fifteen times with an AK. You know what that do to your body? Yeah. So people out here ain't playing. And they plan for keeps. Yeah, I mean, it seems it seems so uh, so sad. It is that someone actually lost their life for spray painting a piece of concrete. Right. I understand what it means, and I understand the the symbolism behind it, but it's just a piece of concrete. That's what it is. He did not take anyone's life. He did not rape someone's sister or steal a bunch of money from someone, and so forth. He was clout chasing, spray painting over a mural. It's very foul, but he also could have gotten set straight. Like let's just say the shooter put the pistol in his face and said, "We're going to have a conversation about this, and, right. and, and I'm going to give you this chance. You know, you're always going to remember this moment right. that you could have lost your life, but I'm going to I'm going to show you that what you're doing was wrong, and I'm going to assume you're never going to do it well, again." Well, to my understanding, that wasn't the case. It, he had a whole different situation. Was it over a girl or something? Yeah, or? that was a whole different situation. So, um, so, so what happened over the girl? I, I'd heard that also. Well, him, him and the girl was messing around, and him and another dude was. They both was involved with the girl. The girl called or whatever. I wasn't there, so if I elaborate, then people are gonna say, "How the fuck he know?" Okay, yeah. that was part of the situation. So it was over a female. Um, Isn't it always? <laughs> Yeah. Isn't yeah. it always? But 
you know, these kids got to understand, man, times have changed. It ain't like it used to be. You know, times is worse, way worse. Uh, these kids don't have no, don't understand where they're going with it. They're going to prison for the rest of their life at 17. Oh, oh, yeah. I mean, I don't know if they caught the shooter. I, I haven't heard anything about it. Not to say nothing's happened. They ain't going to catch the shooter. You don't think so? No. On Instagram Live, all this happened, and they know the location, and there's probably other cameras around. And Man, I broke down when I saw that little boy and leaning back, and you can see when the bullet hit, his nose started running, bleeding. And oh, you like, actually saw the real video? Yeah. Oh, yeah, and I, you, I, I didn't and see you that. And, you know, it was sad to see that just unfold the way it did. But some of these young cats need to see uh, things like that because they're not. Back in the days, they used to take kids to the mortuary. They used to show this photo album where have you know where kids have been shot by different uh, pistols, stabbed, and all that, and died from. And it used to really scare kids. You know what I'm saying? They don't do that. They don't have that type of shit no more. You know where we could try to scare our kids straight. So I think they need to get back to that because watching that video, man, just brought me to just reality is cold. And to hear him say where he was at and trying to tell his homeboy, it was yeah. sad, man. Yeah, he was still trying to talk. So he actually got shot in the face all those times? Yeah, he got shot somewhere, somewhere in the neck or something, wherever he was hit. And he was like this and had his arm up and he was trying to tell his people where he was at. And he started bleeding from the nose and the mouth. Yeah. And I think some shit they shouldn't even, sh I mean, wow. Yeah. Well, rest in peace, uh, Indian Red Boy. I, right. I never knew him. You know, the whole world kind of got to know him that day. Right. Uh, and, you know, was it over a girl? Was it over Nipsey? I mean, regardless, man, whatever it was was not worth someone's life. No, it wasn't. Yeah, and whoever did it, if they get caught, it is probably not worth spending the rest of their life in prison because you're not you're not getting a slap in the wrist for that. I mean, that that's, no. that's life in prison, possibly the death penalty. Right. You know, because you could say, you know. Well, you're going to take a plea deal. You ain't going to want the death penalty. You're going to take a, a plea deal. 15 to life, something like that. Somewhere. But is it worth it? No. You know, a lot of us sitting there regretting the fact that we did what we did. Man, if I'd have kept my ass at home, if I'd have stayed laying up fucking my girl, if I, I could have kicked it with moms, I wouldn't be here today. But we don't think like that. Well, you know, I just recently interviewed uh, uh, Malik Lee, uh -huh. who was Snoop's bodyguard. Yeah. And he went into the whole story over uh, the guy that got killed. Okay. That was, uh, you know, that ran up on him. Mm -hmm. And you were actually at death row at that time. Yeah. Were you actually, I mean, when, when the shooting actually happened, were you with death row at the no, time? No, I wasn't. Yeah, I was, I was always with death row, but doing my own thing. You okay. know what I'm saying? I wasn't there when that situation happened. Right. I don't mean physically there, but were you around? Yeah, I was still doing that. Okay. I, after that, I was there for Malik and Snoop. Right, for the, the trial. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're a death row, and you're hanging with Suge, and you find out that a murder just happened with the biggest artist on the line. Right. What did you think? Well, for number one, the, the first thing you heard is, we got to get him out of jail. Suge knew he had to get him out of jail. You know, I say a lot of bad shit about Suge, but at that time, Suge was a businessman and he did look out for people. Right. But he did it for his reasons. So when when he got them out of jail, um, well, Malik didn't get out of jail. At first. No, when he got Snoop, he, he got, got Snoop he, out of jail. He, Snoop yeah. was his main priority. Right. And he had to get him out of jail. And when they got out of jail, when he got out of jail. I think Suge was able to relax now. He was cool because Snoop still had prior shit that he was doing. So that was his only concern. And everybody was like, oh, Snoop done caught a high one. Oh, Snoop, woo, woo, woo. But 
Snoop, Snoop was more worried about going to jail than the situation in itself. He wasn't trying to go to jail. He just started to live his life. Right, and he had been in jail already. Not for that. For a little no, bit. No shit, yeah. A little bit, like some county yeah. shit. Yeah, he, he never did any, any stretches. Yeah. But God knows you're now becoming the biggest artist in the world. You do not want to go Now you go to jail for murder? Now you go to Now you go to prison? jail for murder, right. You know what I'm saying? So, so Malik sat in the county for like a year. No, it wasn't that long. No, it was like that long, yeah. That's what he said. A year? Yeah, Malik. I don't think he said in there. Yeah, the bodyguard. I don't think he said in there no year. Well, that's what he said. I don't know if it if it was. They wouldn't give him bond. That was the whole thing. They wouldn't give him bond. Well, because he remember he's the shooter. Yeah, they Snoop couldn't. is the accessory. Yeah, right. Technically, although they were being charged together, there was different charges for each person. Yeah. So he had the more serious charge of actually pulling the trigger. Okay, I didn't know it was a year. Yeah, it didn't no, seem like a year. Yeah, no, it was it, it was a while, and you know he described the situation. Uh, it was one of those things where they're they're living in, um, I think Venice in this apartment. You know, they're living next next door to each other. So some some gang members were outside tripping with the dog pound, whatever. They leave to go to the studio, and then they realize Daz had forgot the, the Dat player. You know, because back then they were recording on Dats. Right. They turn around and come back. And then one of the dudes that was there was like kind of flagging him down and said, hey, listen, you know, we're really sorry. My homie was tripping. He's he's diabetic and hasn't taken his uh, his pills or whatever. And then this dude comes out the bushes, starts to reach for his gun. And then, you know, Malik opens fire uh, and kills him in, in self-defense. Well, you know, on the way back, we're going down the street and we see this guy like in the middle of the street. You know, it's just kind of like waving us down, flagging us down. You know, and it was it was kind of strange to me, but I noticed, I noticed who it was. I know it was, it was one of the guys that was in the front seat. You know, and he's waving us over. So we kind of pull over, Snoop pulls over, and I'm thinking, okay, this could possibly be a situation. So I set my gun on my lap. He goes over off the sidewalk now, and he's kind of standing up by some bushes. And I do remember him saying, hey, man, you know, hey, don't we sorry. We know who you are. You know, my boy, he just be tripping sometimes, man. You know, my fault. He, I, don't even, I, I still remember him saying something about medication. You know, I don't, I don't think he took his medicine. I still kind of vaguely remember that because I think about this a lot of times. And, you know, to make a long story short, not to, you know, he, uh, he, um, <laughs> Give me a second, man. Yeah, take your time. He he just said, "Man, I just my boy, he tripping sometimes. Man, we sorry, we sorry." Next thing we know, we saw who we know now, the deceased, try to run at us, and the guy grabbed him. He pushed him, and when he pushed him, he reached, and when he reached, that's when I fired. So then the trial starts. Now, leading up to the trial, you know, and we talked about this, there was like, there was threats going around. There was, you know, new, you know, stories that the witnesses were being intimidated and, and, and everything else like that. From your point of view, when the trial starts, was it tense? Was there situations around or? That was one of the reasons why Shug wanted me to come and sit up there every day. Uh, People was coming up there saying that they gonna tell a different story and make sure Snoop go to jail, uh, get found guilty. It was people uh, pretty much making threats as, if you don't give me this, this is what we gonna do type of shit. Um, Suge felt the need, if those cats come up there fucking with Snoop, then Snoop got somebody to make sure he all right. So Suge was protecting him 100. Um, that was a long time ago, but the, I don't think none of the jurors was intimidated by nothing and nobody. The the jury, that 12 was, well, uh, they was okay, should I say. That's all I'm going to say about that. Right. And, you know, I mean, people were taking the stand, like his friends yeah. who were there took yeah. the stand. Uh, their stories were, like, not matching up. <laughs> You know, uh, one of them basically, uh, one of the guys took the gun 
you know, took the gun from from the victim and hit it and basically said, you know, I, my homeboy was dead and someone had to pay for it. Right. You know, he actually And that's said, all they wanted was was to get paid. And that that was the initiate that was the first thing they was trying to do. That's the first thing that came out of their mouth. They're gonna get paid for it. But Suge didn't bite into that. Suge didn't bite in because it couldn't go away now. Well, yeah, I mean, you can't pay off. If you pay off a witness, now you're, it's, it's, it's uh, witness tampering, which is a whole different situation. It's a whole different situation, but they was getting that at Suge as if we're going in and tell this story if you woo to woo bam with, with that. So it's like, no, nah, fuck no. Nah. I know the, what happened. So Suge really believed in Snoop. And he, was, he didn't bite into that. When you heard the, the verdict, not guilty, uh, how did you feel? I was downstairs. We was in the cafeteria. And uh, one of the young ladies, a lawyer, something to say, they just found Snoop not guilty. And we all got up, beating on the table. Yeah, right, right. So <laughs> we was happy he won the case. Yeah. Uh, we all went to the elevator and waited till he got out of the elevator, came down, and uh, we walked him and his moms, I mean, him and his pops and him out to the limo, you know, at the back of the courthouse, and, um, you know, the cameras and everything was there and wanted to talk to him. Right after that shit, we went and had big-ass lobsters and, <laughs> and, and, and fucking potatoes this big. We partied. We partied like a mug after that. Yeah, I mean, uh, Snoop really dodged a bad one with that one because although it's clear what happened, you don't know what you know how these trials go. I right. mean, I mean, clearly the prosecutor felt that they had a case that right. they're, they're going to win, right? In order to you know to take this to court, right? Otherwise, they would have either dropped it or offered Snoop some little slap on the wrist plea deal that Snoop would have probably taken. Snoop, I don't think David Kennerman was going for that. They wanted it to be squashed, it was done, the deals they came with, the whole nine, they weren't taking nothing, they weren't doing nothing. We already know that that we finna win this shit. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, Suge was good luck. Suge made it happen. Yeah. Just like with me and my brother case. Me and Timmy caught a uh, murder. And we sat in Compton Court in the, at the jailhouse, and he got us out of that murder. You know, we wound up with a self-defense, and we were lucky because the little boys told that this guy is, you know, he got us out here jacking for rims. So, you know, through the grace of God, we was lucky, and we dodged a bullet. But we, if we didn't have that help from... Shook pushing that line real fast, we'd have, we'd have sat in there and we'd have, we'd have been doing time. Right, you're talking about the the self defense shooting that we talked about in our last interview. That lived, yeah, that me and Timmy was on. Oh, okay, and from what I understand, you know, Shook put up all the money for you know Snoop's defense and everything. Yeah, you yeah, know? he made sure he got him out of jail. Now Shook done done a lot of bad shit, man, and and and. Hurt a lot of people, but the people that's around him, that's near him, he take care of him, and he made sure Snoop was good. Whatever happened after that, Chug just showed his hand. Well, um, I interviewed uh, Track recently, who was King Von's manager, mm -hmm. and he was actually, uh, you know, one of the victims in the shooting that happened uh, in Atlanta. Uh, where King Von got killed mm -hmm. by a Quando Rondo's guy. And what I talked about in the interview was how similar the chain of events that led up to King Von's death were, were to Tupac's murder. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and you're familiar with the situation, right, with yeah. King Von? I mean, essentially, him and this dude Quando had some internet back and forth. They were in the same outside in the same club. King Von, when we realized he was there, ran up on him, started punching him. And, you know, in the same way that Tupac ran up on, you know, on Orlando. And, I mean, and essentially shortly after both situations, both men, you know, both aggressors ended up dead. Right. Um, and when I explained the situation to, to Track, who got shot 
in the, you know, in the leg in the process also. He said, yeah, he said it, it did remind him a lot. I mean, a lot of people, when, when the second tape came out and you saw the fight and everything else like that, a lot of people compare the situation to how Tupac died. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a guy that ran up on someone who he had an issue with, start punching him, and shortly afterwards, he ends up getting killed. So, I mean, do you think that's a fair comparison or no? Bro, it's past fair. It's, it's, it's kind of crazy, right? Like, yeah. it's the same scenario. Um, and Vaughn is like the same type of artist, same type of guy. Like, it's just, it's just saying God must have had a plan and the plan got to be probably bigger than we all know it is because it's crazy how that scenario kind of fit with him. And he's really the Tupac of this generation, on the truth. Just mm -hmm. content, storytelling, creative wise, putting you in different places and different, and really knowing his background and his level of talent and the, the way he carry himself, everything was just like that. So if anybody, if anybody would look at it like it's crazy, I wouldn't, I, I kind of look at it like, wow, it's yeah. it's crazy how it played out with Pac, but definitely the same comparison. Yeah. Pretty much all of the situations, uh, the little cat in Texas, Mo3, all of them are winding up the same way. They get this little beef, they fight, the next thing you know is on on site, or they they do it right then and there, and they just not getting it, Vlad. And can't nobody tell them that y'all making money now. You don't have to be like this. You don't have to do this. But that's what social media want. You know what I'm saying? People getting a kick out of watching these young cats, you know, shooting at each other live and all of this other shit. But you know, they falling into the trap. Yeah, I mean, King Vod had had absolutely no reason to put his hands on on anyone. It's trying to prove a point. Yeah, I mean, and it like when I dug into the story, like it was allegedly over a girl, like NBA's baby, NBA young boy's baby mother, who you know. Quando is affiliated with that was hanging out with King Von and, and that started some sort of weird back and forth and it's not even Quando Rondo's girl but he's just riding for his man and then you know now now King Von felt like you know he you know he has to respond somehow but it's like man they could have just minded their own business like everyone Period. was making money and look King Von is dead he had kids. They don't have a father. Track got shot. Um, Quando Rondo's man is being charged with murder. Everybody lose. You know he he's he's out on bail right now, but he's unless they could prove that maybe he was a security and maybe he was defending his his client, maybe. But chances are they're probably going to throw the book at him. He's going to jail. Quando Rondo has problems doing shows now, you know? And then like, you know, since King Von was technically a bigger artist at the time, right. like all the King Von fans are basically like kind of ganging up and now people aren't listening to his music as much, you know? And, and, and he, he can't perform in certain areas. And it's like, there's no wins anywhere. Every, everyone loses th through various degrees. No one ends up on top. Everyone, Loses on every level. Black, when they start seeing that this is a cycle in rap music, then maybe they'll stop wanting to have a beef with each other. Mm -hmm. We don't have to fight each other to make music or or be booked on the same concert, the same tour. Y'all purpose is to make money. Just like I explained to them guys about Tupac, your purpose is to make money, not to be a thug. You ain't got to do that shit no more. You got money, and they not getting it. If, if you're making serious money and you're still angry, I just don't get it. There's some sort of deep-seated problems that are happening. You should probably get therapy. It's, Ser seriously, you should, it's, you should get therapy. It's our lifestyle. A lot of us ain't had money, and when we get it, we want to be out there. We want to flash our rings. We, wanna, we want people to notice that we got money. We want people to know that I got 80 grand in this bag right here. I can go buy what I want. Then how do people look at you? Everybody want to be around that thug. 
they need to start showing you don't have to be a thug to make music. Yeah. You don't have to be a killer to fit in. You don't have to. But everybody think that that's the way today. If you ain't no thug, I ain't fucking with you. That's bullshit. Yeah, man. At our age, it's silly. It is. It, it really, you look at it and just go, like, like you work to get to a point only to just go backwards. You know, like, like what, what, what was the point of all the work? You might as well just stay down there. Man. <laughs> you know, like. Why do it? Why do it? Save yourself the trouble. You Did got you? money now, now you're dead now. Your, your, your kids ain't got a father. Yeah. They ain't got an uncle. Mama done lost her son. You can't do nothing for your family at this point. Yeah, I mean, you know, Snoop did an interview recently where he basically said that uh, after Tupac and Biggie got killed, he stopped rapping about death. That's a good thing. Yeah. Because he's down here up close and personal now. He see it. He done talk to these guys. You know what I'm saying? Down these both of these guys is dead. Mm -hmm. So I can understand where Snoop coming from. Um, you know, I don't blame him for changing it. I don't have to be like that. You know, everybody could have followed that that cycle. But a lot of those cats was ready to go and didn't want to be around that BS. Didn't want to, couldn't make music like that. Didn't want to do it. So you can't blame them for wanting to separate themselves. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I talked, I remember to a few people, and I remember the, the most poignant conversation was, was with Tupac's brother, Mo Prem, just about how Tupac talked about death so much in so many songs. This was not just an occasional line here and there. It was like entire songs. Maybe he knew it. Yeah, you know, uh, his last video, he's in heaven. <laughs> his last album cover, he's, you know, on a cross with a bullet coming at him. Right. It's just a shame we lost him so early, but I think in the spiritual realm, his inner clock, he knew he was gonna go early. I, I'd heard that. I'd heard that before. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I had heard that he had this sort of drive in the studio where like, I gotta hurry up and get these songs out because I don't have a lot of time. I gotta hurry up. Like, yep. you know, I heard he would get angry at like producers and other rappers if they took too long. Yep. Because he had this urgency about yep. him. Yep, he had to express himself. He had to get, get it out. He had to get it out. Why do everybody gotta go to heaven though? This is what I don't understand. Everybody do videos about being in heaven. All of us ain't gonna make it to heaven. <laughs> right. Do a video where you sitting in hell having hot tea with, with, with the devil. I mean, Lil Nas X did that. Fuck, I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> he, he, did a, he did a video in hell, yeah. Man, every funeral, uh, 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 heaven gates are open for you. Right. All of us are not built or ready for heaven. We ain't prepared. You know, I think one of the funniest uh, stand-ups I saw was with uh, George Carlin, where he says, uh, at every funeral, at some point, someone always says, I know he's up there looking down at us and smiling. But how often should you really say, I know he's down there looking up at us? Because <laughs> I don't think he made it to heaven. <laughs> if, if Charles Manson died, everybody going to say, well, may the good Lord bless his soul. He in heaven now. Really? <laughs> Really? <laughs> and, and you know, I ain't going to talk about nobody else unless I put myself out there. I don't know which way I'm going. Yeah. But that's why I'm trying to change my life and my lifestyle so I can at least get a shot. I mean, do you believe in heaven? Uh, I believe it's something, a higher being than what we have here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. I believe in there's a God. Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, uh. I interviewed this guy named Scott Ross. He was a he's a famous private investigator. Uh -huh. um, he's worked on a lot of cases. Worked on the Michael Jackson case. Uh, worked on the Bill Cosby case. And you know he's basically part of Tom Messero's uh, team. Tom mm. Messero is the lawyer who represented Michael Jackson, represented Bill Cosby, right. and was also representing Suge Knight. Right. How did you get on that case? You know, I got a call from a young lawyer who was representing Suge and wanted me to have dinner with him, and I did. And he said Suge Knight would like you to consider defending him, and one thing led to another. And for seven months, I represented Suge Knight. Uh, then I had a falling out uh, with various people, and I basically withdrew from the case. But 
you know, Suge was always decent to me. Very bright guy, uh, very creative, a lot of leadership ability, a uh, very talented man, and always treated me well. I have to say that. But there were some differences that developed. They're confidential, and I'll leave it at that. But uh, I only have decent things to say about him. And ultimately, he ended up leaving. Something happened <laughs> between him and Suge. He didn't really want to get into it. But ultimately, he left. He left. Was it because uh, Suge didn't have the money that he wanted? Well, it's funny you should ask that because in our interview, Scott Ross said that Suge was actually considering exposing Tupac's shooter in order to pay for his defense. But Suge liked to just talk. And one of the conversations that we had had was he was trying to figure out how to raise some money. He said he didn't have any money. And um, again, we needed experts. For example, we needed his eye expert. We needed his doctor and they're not going to come in for free. And um, in order to do that, um, he was talking to me about trying to sell either the information, do a book, something about the Tupac shooting. And, and those were the types of conversations that we had. You know, people can call Suge a lot of shit, but I don't think Suge would have put himself in that type of situation, knowing that he's going to jail. Um, I can't see uh, Suge telling to fix his situation. He a lot of things. He's a motherfucker, but me honestly, and you know how I feel about Suge Knight, just keeping it 100, I don't see him doing that. So, but if they say, if the lawyer said that that happened. Well, the private investigator. Yeah, the private investigator, yeah. who am I to judge? So, well, number one, you're not exactly uh, finding the cure for cancer here. I mean, everyone right. already knows who it is. Right. Uh, Suge just happened to be one of two living people that were in the two cars involved in the shooting. So a he little was like, closer than that, Vlad. He was a little closer. Well, he was in the car with Tupac. With, with not just by being in the car with the murders, but he was more involved. Than, than people think. It was the conversations and all that shit that led up to that day or led up to the demise of these two people. My hands ain't clean, should I say. So it was more to it than that. See, one thing people don't understand, Suge know a whole lot, knows everything. Right. But Suge can't talk because if Suge talk, Suge implicate himself and 99.9% .9 of the bullshit that was going on. So Suge could never talk. So Suge can't just do an interview and say it was Orlando Anderson. Give me he my can check. do everybody understand. Everybody already knows it's Orlando. Right, exactly. But Suge know that Suge can't just say it was Orlando Anderson. You know and I know who's ever interviewing him gonna go way deeper into the situation than, well, who is it, Suge? No, Suge gonna have to explain. He gonna have to elaborate way more than what by just saying Orlando Anderson. And he knows that. But he cannot, 99.9% .9 of the bullshit was his bullshit. So he can't expose anybody or put anybody out there. That's why when people say Suge telling or told, it's bullshit. Bullshit, Suge ain't saying shit to nothing about nobody. He can't afford that. Well, I mean, we'll see. I mean, supposedly he has a book in the works. He has a documentary or a film in the works. Who knows? I, think I can see in his book he talking fuck Mark James or some shit like that. <laughs> but I don't see Suge put nobody out there because Suge is uncertain that, well, if I speak on this motherfucker, is he going to say whoop the whoop bam on me? Now, his stay in prison might turn be an extra 40 years or a life sentence if he did that. Sure can't afford that and don't want that. Well, uh, unless he does like a proffer agreement, right? And then when he come home, then what? There's still no Suge. Well, I mean. Life without it, 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 what you had and don't have any. Well, it's not like Suge was really balling out of control when he got locked up. 
I mean, Suge no, was, he had was, already lost death row. He was already, you know, I mean, the money situation obviously wasn't there anymore. Suge got people that's taking care of him, got money. He buying motherfucking women's cars from prison. He bought a woman a car from prison. Uh, uh, yeah, he buying women cars from prison. Okay. So where do you think he getting his money from? I have no idea. I, I, I've never actually spoken to Well, Sean, I'm going to so. say he got good friends like Ray J, and and I'm not going to say that this is what these guys is doing, but he got good friends like Nick Cannon. He got good friends like Ray J. He got some good female friends that who he supported, they're supporting him now. They're, okay. they, they're in his corner. So, so there you have that's it. a good thing for him. You know, and recently Harry O got out of prison. Yeah. And there's actually a picture, and we'll go ahead and show it. It's him and Dr. Dre hanging out together. Now? Yeah. That's a good thing. Yeah. That's a good thing. I dig it. But me and Harry O actually spoke. That brother is a businessman, and he just got caught up in a twist. Uh, I applaud him. He out. He's he's trying to get his life together. Mm-hmm. What's, what's left? He, now, mind you, this man done been in prison for a very long time. Yeah, haven't touched, haven't seen, haven't did anything in a very long time. I, I you know, I, when he was supposed to get out and Suge was on the street, I said it's gonna be a bad thing if Harrier would have got out with Suge on the street. It would have been a problem. Really? I think Suge couldn't walk the streets after the bullshit he played, no. Yeah, but Harry O's much older now, man. He don't want to go back to prison. Uh, I can understand you that. You know, I, I don't see the two of them really getting into it. There was a lawsuit, which Harry O, I believe, won. Yeah. Right? You know. Well, him. I think if he was on the street, Suge would have paid him. But there's a code of ethnic. There's a, there's a, come on, man. If, if, if Harry O would have got out, and I can't speak for him, but I don't think Suge would have paid him. He wouldn't have had no choice but to pay him. And I just say it would have been bad blood. Um, you know, we go from being business partners, from talking to to chopping it up on the phone every other day, to don't answer the phone for him. You know what I'm saying? Uh, okay, so so let's just kind of get into the story a little bit. Harry O allegedly financed death row records. Yes. Right. There was also another guy involved. I mean the the story I heard I think I think from Reggie Wright uh and me and me and Keefe touched on this in our interview there was actually like a a much higher guy that uh you know they call boss man uh who basically put up the real money and Harry O was sort of the the go between. I mean, who knows what really happened? You know, that guy went to prison, got out. He doesn't want nothing to do with nothing. <laughs> you right. know what I mean? So so Harry O was essentially the face of that. And, you know, after helping out with the seed money to launch Death Row, uh, you know, there was a special phone in the studio, I guess, at Solar Records studio. Yeah, the red phone, yeah. The red phone that he would call to speak to Suge or, or whoever else at Death Row to basically overlook his uh, his operation. Right. The whole thing with, um, you know, those guys, the, the the producers who ended up, you know, talking on the phone and then Suge and a pistol whipping him. <laughs> that was all over that same phone. It all goes back to the Harry O story. You know, and ultimately by him pistol whipping these guys when he ended up kicking uh, Orlando, that's why he got sent back to prison because he was still on probation from that situation. Right. So Harry right. O's story runs deep into the whole death row. All of it, all the way, d- d- all death the row. way with- uh, like, have you? Did you ever actually talk to Harry O at all, or no? No. Okay, so that no. was Chug's thing. Yeah. But, but there was a, a hard, fast rule. That, okay, this is the phone. Yeah, that's the phone. That that's the phone that he talked to him on. Yeah. Yeah. At what point did did Chug say, you know, something? Fuck, fuck this agreement. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna honor anymore with Harry O. I believe when he came and felt like the boss. I believe, you know. When the money started, when he started seeing his money, that's when, you know, we had a different Suge night. Um, when Suge put himself on that pedestal, it was pretty much fuck everything and everybody. He was doing him and the way he wanted to. He was the boss. So I think when he started 
denying certain individuals and and felt there was no need to give this individual or that in, individual uh, monies for a certain individual, he started running into problems. Well, and there you have it. And then a lawsuit happened, and uh, ultimately, Suge lost because he didn't show up to court. He, he lost a lot of his cases because he didn't show up. He lost death row because yeah, he didn't show up. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Up. Well, he lost death row, yeah, because of the whole Harry O thing and so forth. And ultimately, it all got auctioned off, and now what, Mattel Toys but owns you know, it or something. I want to say this, Vlad, and a lot of people don't believe that people have hidden agendas. Mm -hmm. uh, Suge never used drugs. Suge never smoked nothing. Suge never did anything pertaining to alcohol, tobacco, nothing. Hmm. Well, uh, he smoked cigars. Yeah, well, now he do. Now he he just got into that. The drinking, I never seen Suge drink the way he did. Hmm. And using different, using drugs, um, that was his demise. That what took him down because he wasn't sharp right here no more. He wasn't thinking no more. Hmm. You know, he just got too relaxed into him and did the same thing Tupac did, whether people realize it or not. He wanted to be a part of the goddamn homie situation, the security. Hmm. And he should have stayed the business manager, the CEO. He should have held on to his title opposed to start doing all the extra shit. And shit would have been all right, but the alcohol and all that shit, fucked his mind up. Well, uh, I remember you mentioned uh, on your podcast that you took sides in the in the MC8 and DJ Quick Beef. Yeah. Explain. I was a blood. Uh, DJ Quick was a blood. <laughs> Eight was over there, you know, was doing his disrespect. He was a crip. So I was just riding with what I believed in. Yeah. I didn't care about what MC8 and them was doing. I was riding with the homie, which, which is a blood. Right, because... Quick was the first rapper to claim blood on, put it out there. Yeah. On, on an actual record. Yeah, they put it out yeah, there. Yeah, Eazy-E wasn't saying any of that stuff. He wasn't saying Kelly Park Crip or whatever no. it was. He was saying gangster, gangster yeah. in general, but no one was specifically, because Quick is, uh, what set is he from? Uh, treetop. Treetop, exactly. So he was a treetop, and he was making reference to that and so forth. Right. And he was the first rapper to actually do that. As a blood yourself, when you heard that, uh, how'd you guys feel? Oh man, it was it was great <laughs> to to be partying, and then you hear quick. Me and my homeboy Master Ron used to hang on that side of town when he was just DJing in his at the house, and uh, he used to give Master Ron tapes that he used to do. So we used to listen to his music, and and quick was hard. Yeah. So when that beef came out and and uh eight was doing his thing i'm telling you they shot i got shot at bumping easy i mean uh quick quick shit yeah you know and i had to hit a corner real fast because i'm bumping it i guess the crips didn't like that <laughs> song that they knew you had to be a b-dog to listen to that and we felt the same way we listened to eight shit and and, and he dissing the zone and crack yeah, you fast forward to 2020, and now you got a show with <laughs> with MC8, <laughs> man, and and him and and Quick squashed it. They good, but um, Quick was actually at death row for a while. Yeah, he he was with them for a minute. Were um, you there when when Quick was there? Or no, yeah, I was. I told you, I was always around, but not. See, I didn't do. The, I didn't have to do the physical shit no more, because once Buntry was in there. Man, I, I don't have time for this. I'm not going back to prison for the shit that I was doing and doing with them. So I had Let Me Ride Hydraulics that I was focused on. And then, you know, when Quick was hanging, you know, some of the cats, like certain individuals in the group, in the in the clique, was hating on him. You know what I'm saying? And he, he spoke on that many times about certain individuals in there. But... He was always a cool person. He was always a cool cat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, DJ Quick has been mad at me forever. Uh, I'm not quite sure why. Uh, we had an interview scheduled that he didn't show up to. And then he said a few things about me over the years, like made some some remarks about me. And uh, my thing was always like, 
you know, whatever your issue is, let's just get on the phone and talk about it. Right. Because I, I'm, I'm a, a fan of his music, and I think an interview with him would be incredible. It'd yeah. Be, it'd be historic. So so whenever I see, he said something about me like a month ago or something, saying I should be pepper sprayed or some some weird, like, and I, I'm, I'm always like, and we have some of the same people in common, and I've always been like, you know, just get us on the phone together. Like, let's, let's just have whatever he has. You know, I think it was a, some article we had posted like 10 years ago or something. About like him? Yeah, I think so. I heard something like that. And I'm like, whatever it is, it doesn't sound like it's very serious. Do you remember the article? No. I, I think what, well, actually, hold on, hold on, hold on. What I think it was, was I believe that his daughter went to prison for, I think, accidentally killing their baby. Uh-huh. Killing, killing his daughter's baby, and 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 her and her boyfriend. I really, let me let me let me just look this up before I start putting out weird shit. Right. So so here we go. So so there was a story. This was back in 2013, right? This was early in the in the Vlad TV, you know, uh, business, where his daughter uh, was charged in a first degree murder charge that led to the death of his two year old grandson. Okay. Okay. And I believe that we, you know, just like a lot of other outlets were covering the story, we had did an article about it. And from what I understand, he's still mad at me over posting that article. What was the, I mean, whatever the contents was, it was something in there said that made him feel you shouldn't have said that. Um, but, and this is where everything go wrong. A lot of people comment on shit that we don't supposed to be talking about, but then don't think the other person should be offended by it. Now, don't be just mad at Vlad, but what Vlad say. Be mad at everybody that was voicing their opinion on your personal business. Well, well, it wasn't an opinion, it was an article. It was a news article about the situation. Oh, so you didn't, you didn't say nothing in I never, the I never spoke about it. So why would This is the first time actually speaking about it, period. It was a news article, but I guess we were the only one of the only hip hop outlets Maybe that they were reporting on it, so he didn't want anyone reporting on it. But he'd actually spoke about it himself at one point. So that's what I had heard. That's you know, and you know, I'm looking at an article right now about it. You know, where it was an interview that uh, you know he did with like Hello Beautiful. He said I don't like to talk about it, but I'm supporting her. It wasn't her fault. She didn't do all that. So I'm going to say right. so. So he's you know probably feels bad that his daughter went to prison right. for a situation that may have been an accident. Right. And, and we reported on it. And he's still mad at me to this day. I, I don't know. But now like see, I said. That's where it gets twisted. Now you got to, okay, here I am on the outside thinking in. So was the report basically speaking on that he support her 100? Or was the report bashing her? She killed her. You, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to speak on his situation like that because I know he don't want to relive that yeah, shit. I'm actually looking at the article right now. It's from June June 11, 2013. DJ Quick's daughter charged with killing her toddler son. That's it. It, it was it was a a a very standard article, you know, uh, you know about about what had happened about the, you know the police case. There was no there was no uh, opinion about it. You know, it said the couple was charged with first degree murder and child abuse. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Did you know him at the time? I had met him briefly when I was rolling around with Game and he was DJing for Game. I remember we were at MTV where we all, we were all smoking weed in the, in the MTV bathroom and, and we all got kicked out of MTV. Damn. And, and you know... He he was allowed to stay because he was actually DJing for game at the right. time, but that was our only real interaction. I don't remember having a conversation with him beyond that, and this was like maybe two thousand and five. Maybe I think y'all should should get online and talk. This is what I'm saying. It's like this is what I this is what I was told is the problem that, that he's still mad about this article from 2013, a standard news article. You know, and I'm actually looking at the article, and there's no opinion at all. It's literally stating the facts of what happened, you know, which was actually sourced from an actual news site, right. <laughs> an actual local local news uh, lo- local news uh, outlet. So I don't know, I don't know, but but quick is is welcome. And like I said, we have people in common that spoken to him. He's like, no, no, I don't want to talk to him. 
And it's like, okay. He good people, but you should give him, just, just give him five minutes of your time, man. And and me personally, I wouldn't try to explain a situation that's that old. If that's how he feel and he, and he, and he stands on that, I'd let it go. I wouldn't, I wouldn't force the issue, but I mean, it just sounds like a misunderstanding. And, and me, I would like to know why you're mad. You know what I'm saying? I would if like to I know too, because we literally had an interview scheduled. It was with him and I believe Problem had a joint album and the interview was scheduled and, and we had explained that both of them need to be there in order to do the interview. And they're like, yeah, cool. Well, they'll both be there. And then like 30 minutes before the interview, our DJ Quick doesn't want to do it. And it's like, we had already booked the studio, we had already booked the cameraman, and we had spent time researching, and it's like, all right, like, like we 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 playing around with with each other's time and money right now, right. you know what I mean? So it's kind of like, yo, we should just get on the phone and have a conversation. Uh, so you could tell me what exactly you have a problem with, right. and I'll be very open if I made a mistake along the way, right, to correct that. But I'm not gonna apologize for just reporting on the news, because this is what we do. This is our job, right? <laughs> just like. I can't tell you to stop producing music, you know, or working with a certain artist. Well, it just is what it is. I think it's valid. His his reason have to be valid, whatever it might be, especially if it's been eight years now. Yeah. So, I mean, if you can get that line on him, I, w- I would talk to him. Yeah. Uh, but he have to be willing to talk to, yeah. talk to him. Some people are willing. That's fine. Yeah. It, it is what it is. You know, exactly. at the end of the day, I'm a fan of his music. Uh, I, I've interviewed people like Sugar Free that that he was the reason why they had classic projects together. Right. Uh, you know, I was a, a big fan of what he did at Death Row. Right. You know, like what he did with Pac. I think he's a super talented dude. Uh, and it always annoys me when I hear stuff like this, where it's like, oh, so and so hates you for something. It's like, but you never even spoken to me. Like, you know what I mean? Like, right. it's, it's just crazy to me. But whatever. Everyone has their own life. Well, there's a lot of people out there feel a certain whack, certain kind of way about Vlad, man. That's I right. Don't, I don't know what your aura is or what you, what you, what you giving these people, but who knows, man? And I don't understand it. Who knows, man? I, I say every time I sit in his chair, and and I have a conversation with Vlad, Vlad don't come at me with that. I need you to tell me who who the whoop is. I need. We don't talk like that. So yeah. where are you people getting it from? He, I see a different Vlad, man. Yeah. I don't see, watch Vlad. Vlad can be, I don't see that. Right, I've never filmed you with a secret yeah, phone. I'm, that's or, what I'm, I'm looking at. <laughs> I've, never, I've never gotten in your face. But I've never seen that. <laughs> right, you know it's what just I'm not saying? me. So, it's not me. You know, everybody's perception is different, yeah. and some people think the same way. Uh, I would say you're very successful in what you're doing. Some of us can't get to that point. Mm-hmm. At that point, we start to envy and especially the shit we can't emulate, we get mad. We don't like that shit. So, and, so, so people bash it, yeah. And they think, oh, that white boy, he's just taking our culture and, no, it's how many black people sit here in the chair and do it. We don't have to sit here. If we felt that way, don't go, don't go on black. There you go. You there you me? go. And, and you know, like, uh, to kind of make things sort of full circle, because I remember I, I was uh, I helped squash the beef that you and Bosco had. Right. 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 Uh, I got you know Bosco apologized. Right. On camera for right. saying some things about you. Right. You then sent me a video accepting his apology. Right. Man and, shit. Yeah, man shit. And and I remember when uh, I sat down with Bosco last time, or, or maybe the time before. Uh, he had just finished his uh, celebrity boxing thing with Gonzo. I never saw that, man. Right. But but basically he was like, hey, Gonzo wants to squash his beef with you. You know what I'm saying? That's cool. And, and it was like, because Gonzo had made some videos talking about me and, and, and so forth, so I just blocked him on Instagram. I never said anything, but I just blocked him and kept right. the movie. He's like, yo, he wants you to unblock him and he wants to squash it with you. So I'm like, ah, right, let's put him on the phone. Got You know, put us on speakerphone. He apologized for what he said. I said, cool. And I brought him in, did an interview. And there you go. That's it. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's that's how men's supposed to conduct their business and have right. business accordingly. We ain't, can't be running around here like we got skirts on and just stay mad forever. <laughs> right. I can't be mad at you that long. I, right. It's it too just hard. ain't in me. It takes too much effort. <laughs> yeah, like with Charleston. I am not finna walk out this door and be 
feeling like I need to have a grudge with you or worry about you. Yeah. I ain't mad. I'm, oh, that shit is just too much energy, man. Well, uh, and this interview just dropped today. I did an interview with Gene Deal. Okay. You know who that is? Gene Deal, yeah. Yeah. That, that, that and Reggie that was... just go back and forth. And I always, you know, I check in with him from time to time to see how he's doing with okay. his medical and all that. Um, he, the last time I talked to him, he told me, I'm done with all this shit. I'm tired of people talking about me. Man, don't let them people stop you from doing what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So he back at it, huh? Yep. We did an interview. We did a really deep, uh, in-depth interview. That's cool. Uh, and, you know, he was there when Biggie got killed. Right. Uh, he was in Puffy's car, which was right in front of Biggie's car. He's the one that turned around first to help Biggie get out the car, right. you know pulled the body out and, and I guess chased after the the car and everything else like that. And, you know, he feels that it was, you know, um, the dude with the bow tie. Mm -hmm. You know, he said he saw him beforehand and then he said the C's uh, said that uh, the dude with the bow tie was the one who did the shooting and so forth. Um, you know, when I talked to, to Reggie Wright about the situation, um, he feels that Poochie was the one that killed Biggie. So according to Greg Kading, uh, Poochie killed Biggie. That's the story, I believe. And Poochie was an associate of Suge? Whatever the story is that Greg is pushing is what I believe. So what is Simon Says Publishing? Simon Says Publishing is a, a publishing music publishing company that I own. Okay. Yes. So there was a rumor you tried to take the publishing from Death Row and transfer it into Simon Says Publishing. Mm, I did buyouts for a lot of people. That was mainly what I did was I bought them out, bought their rights, and um, paid them And um, from this company called Simon Says Publishing. Okay, so you were buying out people's publishing. Yeah, I was just paying them off, getting paperwork cleared up. Okay. And getting, getting everybody caught up and Ooh. purchased. And Poochie is now dead. Right. Did you know Poochie? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when you hear the the theory that Poochie was the shooter, what is your take on it? <laughs> right on. <laughs> okay. You, you you dead point. See, oh, how do I say this without saying it in a fucked up kind of way? Everybody at Death Row had a certain talent. Uh, was a certain kind of way. Was Some cats had no tolerance whatsoever. Some cats was in the fame for the paper. And the money was good, you know, doing certain things. So, you know, Reggie was there. Gene wasn't there. Gene can say he's seen, he can't say he saw the dude pulling the trigger. Correct. He just say he remembers seeing this guy with the bow tie. Around. Around. That's his truth. Yeah. And he did see this. He did see this. But that don't say that that's the man that did it. Right. And in fact, I remember, you know, we did these things called deep dives. We, we re released these videos that digs into this whole story uh -huh. of, I believe the guy's name was Amir Muhammad, yeah. who was accused of it. He's like a, a mortgage broker <laughs> who lives in L.A. somewhere who said that he had nothing to do with this. Nothing whatsoever no. and then it sort of digs into the whole story like the guy that he even accused who even brought up his name or brought up the description was like a crazy person <laughs> like like they like it breaks down like the, the original accuser that who's in prison at the time like right. in the middle of him getting cross-examined he like ran out <laughs> of like the room and ran and, into and, traffic and here and you and go like, <laughs> they was quick and it was coming from all different places, they're quick to spend money on people to say they seen this, they know this, yeah. or somebody told me this. Right. That's not accurate shit. But yet, you ready to put somebody in jail. Yeah. And and, and that guy, Amir Muhammad, doesn't even want to do interviews at all. He just I don't wants blame to, He just wants to be as far from yeah, this situation right? yeah, exactly. as humanly possible. He's not wrong for that. Because uh, I guess he was one of the, he, you know, they try to tie it in because I guess he, he had visited one of the one of the dudes in prison and you know that they they try to put the pieces together um but when you heard the poochie situation i mean number one was poochie known as a as a shooter yeah yeah he was a hitter for real for real okay yeah. so doing something like this would not be out of character not at all okay 
had you heard anything else to actually no 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 everybody 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 in their in their right mind that was there know what happened but ain't nobody going to say poochie 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 uh, even though he's dead well, I mean, Reggie said. Well, it. now that he's dead, I mean, everybody can speak on it and whatever. Now, I'm yeah. surprised they haven't came and said they know who did it. But the hood talks. Everybody know who was doing what, especially when it comes around death row. So, yeah, everybody knew who who did it, why it was done, and you know, some cats are still applying the fact that that it happened because we lost Tupac. So just in retaliation of that, you know, it is what it is. That's how they felt. Okay, so in terms of the streets talking and the rumors, is Poochie the name that comes up more often than not? That's it. Okay, so if you were to bet. I win a lot of goddamn money. You know, if you were to bet Poochie or Amir Muhammad or or the government. (laughs) I win a lot of goddamn money. Okay, by betting on... uh, by betting, betting on Poochie. Poochie. Yes, sir. All right. Well, you know, uh, I, I get sent a lot of interesting stuff. You know, there's a bunch of pictures someone sent me of Poochie and, and everything else like that yeah. and, and stories. And, you know, someone has sent some story about how, uh, you know, you know, they were in the car when him and someone else were like kind of laughing about it or something like that. But who, who the hell knows at this point? Well, it's one got, of those things that's probably going to be. female out there that know more than everybody. Right. Um. You know, everybody trying to put the pieces together of what happened with both of those situations, and it ain't nothing to put together. Everybody already really know, but the people on the outside don't want to believe that this is how it's going down. They want to believe that the FBI is paying people to, to or, or getting rid of people, certain individuals they sell. Man, come on, this is street shit. This shit was, this war, was going on between Death Row and Bad Boy. <sighs> right, because if it was ultimately proven that Poochie was the one who did it, then that tie should ignite into that conspiracy. Yes. Right, because unless you could prove this guy just completely went off on his own to take matters into his own hands, you have to assume that it was probably a, a payment involved or, or something or or it was done on Suge's behalf or, or whatever else. And that's why the story probably stops at a certain point. Yeah, it had to die. It had to die. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, as I was kind of going through my notes this morning, you know, you uh you had done an interview on the Breakfast Club. Yeah. At one point. That's when you guys uh first signed to Charlemagne's uh yeah. Black Effect. And after the interview, um, Trayvon Lane actually uh, did an Instagram post, which is now deleted, yeah. uh, about you. And, uh, you know, I'll just read it real quick. He said, everyone hit me up a couple of days ago asking if I saw a Breakfast Club interview with James. So I looked at it. First of all, James was never part of Death Row crew. He and a couple <laughs> of homies worked for Shug the year before. He wasn't at MGM that night, which, which you've established, uh, nor was he in the Foot Locker which we already know. We, which is already that was your fight. Yeah, uh, he was only around during Club Six Six Two or Snoop Trial, which most of the homies attended. But on, on on some every day, he was not there. James, let's talk about how you churned on the neighborhood. Why you don't talk about that on the Breakfast Club? And the reason he didn't like Tupac was because he didn't have the chance to know him. Food for thought. I had a chance, and 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 let me say this: I ain't never put myself in a situation, and I wasn't there. I ain't never said that I hung out with Tupac like them. Certain times I hung out and saw Tupac, it just wasn't my vibe. You know what I'm saying? Why would I be there when you was fighting? You wouldn't have got your shit almost snatched if I was at the mall. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't have happened the way it did. Um, Only 662, if I wasn't there, none of you cats would have ever been there. Trayvon and none of these cats knew, nobody from the hood knew Suge. None of these dudes. Buntry didn't even know Suge. And Suge lived around the corner from us. That's how tight he was. So when I saw that, I got I got the fuck up mad. I'm just like, I dare this nigga. And went to the hood looking for Trayvon. People got to telling mob in the hood, 
You know what he over here for. I left. Well, does Trayvon still live in, in, in Compton? He'd be, he be still hanging over there. He okay. hanging in the hood. So I wouldn't have went if he wasn't hanging over there. So I'm glad I didn't see Trayvon. Well, I mean, I, I, I speak to Trayvon, you know, from time to time. Right. Uh, we, we've been talking about doing an interview forever, which hasn't happened. He's still holding off, I think, for a big documentary or film project. Which, which may or may not come. I, I don't know. I'm not in his business like that. But he has an offer if he wants to come tell his story. He, right. he has, he has a, an open invitation. He knows that. What happened to my brother? Well, yeah. I mean, your brother reached out to us also. Um, and then it just kind of went, you know, and I, I remember I, I, I hit you up and say, hey, just giving yeah. you a heads up that your brother, you know, or someone in, on behalf of your brother reached out to do an interview. So we're, you know, if he wants to do it, we're going to do it. So we just don't right. want it to be a surprise for you. Right. You know, when it happens because of our relationship, uh, it right. ultimately never happened. Just okay. they, they just stopped responding. Yeah. Well, with Trayvon, man, it was just, who are you? And and, and, and I'm not going to bash him today. Um, I think I learned to, to, not speak on certain individuals because they get in their feelings or whatever. But when he said that, what the fuck do, what reason do I have to be mad? He pretty much explained everything that I've been saying already. No, I wasn't at the witch call him, but only at the Tupac trial, I mean Snoop trial and 662. Man, I'm the hood, if you want to be technical about it. so. Why would I get mad at his bullshit? So I fucking left the hood and I didn't even what you call him no more after that. But I saw him and he was, what's up big homie, what's up mob or whatever. Kind of acknowledged it, but I didn't because I don't go by mob, I don't go by what you call him. And you know, this was right after the homeboy mother got her leg shot off, um, Miss Stevenson went through there, they was hanging out. So that was my only reason for going. Well, uh, if you had run into to Trayvon in Compton, what would have happened? Nothing. Nothing. Just a conversation. I'm not mad at any. I'm not. I ain't mad at nobody. Well, but you went down there. That was that was in the heat of the moment. Pissed off. Okay. When I saw it, I read it. Who in the fuck do this dude think he is? What what is he talking about? And I went on that note. But when 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 I listened and then. My homeboy outside, Lee Ford, said, listen to what he's saying, James. He's saying you only hung around a little bit. Everybody know Mob was there. What are you talking about? What do you mean he wasn't at the mall? Everybody know I wasn't at the mall. Shit, he Bro, was you, you never said you were at the mall. Never, ever. So he you should Never have, heard that, yeah. He wish he wasn't there. Well, so, yeah. oh, fuck. <laughs> this is true, yeah. Man, come on, man. James ain't never put his name on nothing that wasn't bona fide. I ain't got to. That's one thing I ain't got to do. That's one thing I ain't got to do. Uh, well, listen, Trayvon has an open invitation to, to come sit I down. I tell him, man, why you don't go on Vlad, man? He's trying to get you down there. I, I'm trying to get him down here. I'm going to tell him, man, he's, he's trying like to get like you the... and me down there, man. So, come on, <laughs> Trey, let's go. Listen, I, I'll have security there. You know, so 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 he'll feel one hundred percent safe. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. I'll I'll, I'll 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 take care of it. Uh, you know, I feel like he's almost like the, the out of all my interviews, it's sort of like like the missing puzzle piece. Well, in all this. you know what, Trayvon, I'm more trying to just stay out of the way because he ain't trying to kick up the dust or rehash the shit that was going on. So listening to everybody else, you might get tricked into saying something you don't. He pretty much said, well, I'm going to stay away from it. Yeah, but he's not really staying away from it. He still makes well, comments on Instagram and, you know, I mean, he's coming out with some music from what I understand. That he's he still... got control over. Yeah. The music. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, you know what's interesting is that someone actually sent me uh, the cover to uh, uh, to Orlando Anderson's uh, album. He actually had a like a like an album he put out. Well, I know he had a studio right next to my daughter's mama house. Okay, his auntie was he lived right there on California. I didn't know they put an album out on him. He could rap too. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll actually uh, hold on. I'll show it to you. You think is it making money? No, no, it was never really put out. This oh, was okay. just like I think it was like on a cassette or something. Like this is actually what it looks like. Mm. Wow. 
Yeah, Orlando. Uh, yeah, Orlando. Is it five or five Anderson? Live Anderson? Yeah, Success Records Entertainment. Wow. You know? Uh, Is that his uncle? I, I don't know. Oh, that's the group that, that's the uh, company he no, That's had. the company, Success. I mean, this doesn't sound like a real, like, yeah, label. But like, that's you know what, what I mean? It, but it's yeah. got 17 songs, you know? What's Cracking? Seven Deadly Sins, More After Daylight, Ride to This, I Keep Rolling, Blow Them Out the Water. I mean, every song is about shooting people pretty much. Uh, you know, no haters allowed. Um, you know, it, it was uh, so it was one of those things. He even kind of looked like Tupac a little bit, no. if you notice. He, a little bit. In the face? They can be bit. cousins. They can be cousins. They that's can what be I'm cousins. Saying. Uh, Probably that's, was cousins. That's what I'm we saying. We're so close to each other. You know, when you look at sort of what's happening these days, and I think you guys covered this on the Gangster Chronicles. You talked about the Casanova case. Right. Uh, you know, he's facing Rico right now. Right. Um, and, and and it was interesting because, like, early on in his arrest, my name was trending for, like, two days because there was a fake article saying that my interview was the reason why he was locked up, you know, wow. and people were running with it. Like, literally, Vlad was trending on Twitter for two days. Is that the one you saw me with Nick Cannon? Well, yeah. Later on, later on, because the article was fake. Our, our Vlad TV is nowhere in in his his paperwork. In fact, I had only done one interview with him years before he got right. locked up, when he just talked about some jail shit. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Which had nothing to do with his arrest whatsoever, right? Because he was, and what had happened was, uh, you know, we had actually obtained the audio from his bail hearing when he got denied bail, and in the and and, and you could actually hear the prosecutor say that it was because of his interview with Nick Cannon why they were justifying him staying right. in prison because in the interview when they talked to, you know, Nick asked him about his, his gang ties, whatever, he goes, oh, I, I, you know, he's like, oh, I don't bang no more, but I, I'm still ape. And, and and the whole, like, the whole ape thing was sort of the gang that he's tied right. into this whole, this whole Rico thing. You know what I mean? Um, but that's neither really here nor there. At, at the end of the day, you know, when you see these these rappers caught up in these Rico charges, and this is something that's really been happening a lot, like YFN Lucci is up on Rico charges. You know, me and Boosie were kind of going back and forth about this, about how the feds kind of have this, like this rapper Rico thing, is this how, how Boosie pretty much framed it, where it's like, they know this guy's not a gang leader, right? They know he's an entertainer. They know that these charges aren't exactly going to stick, but, they're cloud chasing just like everyone else. Right. And this name is so much more valuable than some unknown people. So they basically hem these guys up on RICO charges because they, they're loosely affiliated. They know some of these guys. When are you going to have time to gang bang? Well, well, yeah, when are you going to have time to do the rest of it? When, when are you going to have time to run a, run, a, run a criminal organization? Right. He got children. When are you going to have time? He's traveling. When will he have time to run a criminal organization? When will any rapper, nigga, you got to be in them trenches. When you run in a criminal organization, you can't be on go whenever, whenever, whenever. That's not a Rico. They should name they shit Rapper Ricos. <laughs> Y'all don't get Different it, Rapper Ricos. And now, I mean, because of all his priors, like Casanova's facing like football numbers. You know, potentially even life. Like, you know, I'd heard like 20 years or something like that. You know, from your point of view, I mean, number one, well, you yourself have never had any RICO charges or anything, no. right? But did you know people that got hemmed up in that? Yeah, in the motorcycle world, um, a couple of friends of mine, yeah, uh, drugs, all that different shit. Uh, I think one, they tried to get sugar on shit like that. On RICO? But they they talked about that they can charge him with some shit with the RICO Act, but I I don't think it makes sense because half of these cats out here ain't really doing it like that. You know, you got some of these guys that 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 make money and then furbish the neighborhood mm -hmm. with certain things, but they not there. But then it takes those guys you giving shit to to say 
We we whoop is doing all of this. Um, I don't know. I don't know, Vlad. I, I can't really speak on it because, you know, everybody doing it. Everybody getting it. It's like yeah. that's the ticket these days. Rico Act, oh, you a rapper? Oh, you a motorcycle rider? You know, the motorcycle clubs is getting it worse than the outlaw clubs. Just because they ride and do certain things, we're going to give you the Rico Act. You can't do this and can't do that no more. So, I, yeah. I mean, Rico is so loose in its definition as that, of where it used to be and why it was designed. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's almost like, you know, I interview gangsters all the time. You know, they could try to get me on a Rico. Oh, well, you know, you're affiliated with uh, these Pyru Bloods, these Crips, these uh, Genovese Mafia. <laughs> like, All like, it takes is somebody to say that you're doing this and doing that with, right. with them. I've cut checks to people. They can turn around and say this check was to to put a hit out on somebody or to buy some drugs. And you're going to go to jail. And, and, and I would get caught up in a Rico. And, and I'm sure people are trying to bullshit. figure out, people are going to watch this and say, oh, yeah, that's how we go going to get them. That's how we're really going to get them. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, the, and, and the, the, the problem is, you know, I, I just feel like once you hit a certain point, like, you really can't affiliate yourself with nothing illegal anymore. You really have to go above and beyond to separate yourself from any sort of illegal activity. And we all should whatsoever. know that. Why go back? You can still, see, a lot of people don't know you can go back to the hood. Mm -hmm. I'm going to the hood to visit. I'm going to the hood to help out on shit. I'm not going to the hood to kick it on the block. I don't have to do that no more. I'm, you know, you got to know the difference of where you at now. You know, we try to climb up out the hood, but then as soon as we get in and we get out the hood, we got the homies make you feel like this is where you're supposed to be, or you ain't shit because you left. Think how you want to think. If you don't have to live a certain kind of way, you don't have to, and it ain't nothing wrong with getting out of there. But it draw you back to your roots and, and it fucks you up every time. Everybody that goes back to the hood get caught up. You know, like, like for example, I interviewed Biggs, you know, one of the three co-founders of Rockefeller Records. Right. And we talked about a situation when I remember we reported on it that he went to prison for uh, like some sort of weed growing operation, right? So, so I brought it up. I said, what does the co-founder of Rockefeller Records, like, what is he doing? Like, explain to me why you would get involved in, in, in some sort of weed operation. This is back when weed was legal everywhere. Right. You know what I mean? Especially in New York, where I believe he was living. And he goes, no, I wasn't in a weed growing operation. He said, I had a friend who, you know, was, you know, had some weed thing, whatever. And, you know, I hooked, up with, hooked him up with another friend who was looking to buy and not knowing that one of the guys was wearing a wire, was our, was working with the feds. The one that bought the stuff. I don't remember the details. One of one of the one of the two guys. He was just helping out some friends. Next thing you know, he's doing years in prison. So I mean, number one, why were you growing marijuana at the time? Um, I actually wasn't growing marijuana. Aha. Okay. Yeah. So what happened was I, it was a conspiracy because I connected somebody from New York to a farmer in uh, California, I was actually buying dispensaries and I was going to buy, I was looking to purchase some of these farmers' houses as well to sell to the dispensaries, thinking I'm building a vertical business. But in that time, it takes three, six or nine months to get up and running. So a friend of mine asked me to connect them with somebody. And because they connected, even though they didn't do a deal, they spoke about it on the phone. That's a conspiracy. And I conspired because I connected them. So you connected a friend or someone you knew mm -hmm. to buy a grow house in, in yeah, they, California? Yeah, they was, they was going to do whatever, you, you know, I, I connected them. I was like, look, this is him. This is him. It's all good. You know, you guys kind of take it from there. That's a conspiracy. Okay. And his phone was being tapped. Exactly. Literally, like I forgot how many years he got, but he got years in prison. That probably was a setup. They wanted his ass off the street some kind of way. And but, that's but, but the way Biggs, to get But Biggs wasn't like, I mean, Biggs had his background decades before, but 
I mean, he was the co-founder of Rockefeller. He was an active partner of Rockefeller Records. He was part of Jay-Z's success the whole time. And who benefits if he go to prison? The feds. If, if they take him off the streets and put him in prison, who benefits? Nobody. Nobody at the record label, nobody. Yeah, I mean, he had already sold Rockefeller by this time, is what, okay. I'm, what I'm saying. Like he was, okay. But what I'm saying is, like Biggs is like, like I, I know Biggs, I've interviewed him multiple times. He's right. a legitimate businessman. Like whatever he did was decades ago. And he got caught up. He got caught up. Just helping a couple friends out. I bet he won't do it again. <laughs> I bet he won't do it again, right? Because and, and and I would always think about that situation, right? It'd be like you'd be hanging out, whatever, and it's like, oh, you know, oh, yo, my girl, you know, just you know, sh she does some coke, you know, you know anyone who got some, you know? What I mean, I'm like, and you think first, like, well, you, oh yeah, let me just help out my friend. Then I'm like, no, what about the fuck am I doing? Hold on, like, I'll, you I'll don't make know a phone the call. Fuck you buying from? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna hook up a, a call to someone I know that might have coke. And now I'm part of a conspiracy. Right. Fuck that. No, I don't know anybody. I don't do coke. I don't know anyone who has coke. And, and, and just live do on not the ask me now. situation. <laughs> right. Just be straight and narrow. Once you get to that point, just be straight and narrow. You got to act your wage. Yeah. That's how I like to say. You act right. your wage. A person who has a million dollars in the bank should not act like the person who's got two hundred dollars in the bank. Right. You know what I mean? You know, we kind of touched on this earlier. Uh, you know, the whole dissing of dead people. Like, you know, smoking a, smoking a pack, you know, you know, smoking tuca is, I think, how it really started. Mm -hmm. You know, where basically you're, you're, you're talking about smoking the ashes of a dead person right. that, someone, that someone cares about. And, you know, this thing, I feel, originated in Chicago. If you look at what's happening in, in Jacksonville, Florida right now, like, it's a big thing. I interviewed Fulio and Young and Ace. I don't know if you're familiar with these two guys, but they've mm -hmm. been going at it forever. Uh, you know, a bunch of people dying from both sides, you know, Young and Ace, him and, you know, he got ambushed, his brother and like two or three of his friends got killed in front of him. He got shot up really badly. And, you know, and he comes out recently with a song called Who I Smoke, where he literally lists like all these people that that were killed. And and I'm and I'm going down the line, I'm like, you mentioned this person and I, and I mentioned the age. 15 years old. He mentioned this person, 18 years old. This person, 19 years old. This person, 17 years old. And he's kind of laughing a little bit about it. And he's like, well, you know, this is this is just, you know, people outside take it seriously, but this is just what we've always done. And, you know, Fulio did, did the same thing. You know, he rapped about this one dude who got killed and he got shot the same day. You know what I mean? And, right. and it goes back and forth. And for people like you and me, this is such a new thing. Like, when when... You know, when Ruthless and Death Row were beefing, no one was talking about anyone who died. No. Ever. You know, Dre and Snoop dis dissed uh, Easy, and Easy dissed them back, and they dissed Luke, and Luke dissed them back, and so forth. But at no point were they talking about... Go kill that motherfucker. Well, well I mean, not even kill him, but talked about someone who's already dead. Right. You know, um, you know no one ever talked about Big Jake who got killed. No one was talking about Wolf who got killed. Right. You know, um, and even when Biggie and Pac got killed, like, you know, like, Biggie could have started dissing Pac after the fact. He never did that. You know, in fact, I heard from Gene, from Gene Deal, which I never knew before, is that when Biggie got into that really bad car accident, it was right when Tupac got killed. Mm -hmm. He was so unbelievably upset over the situation that the car ended up just veering off and, you know, I mean, he ended up really badly hurting himself. You know, when, when you see this in 2021, and like I said, like, you know, like a lot of people were, were talking, you know, when, when Indian Red Boy got killed, everyone's like, talk, oh, I'm going to smoke an Indian Red Boy pack. And, and like, I remember some, some LA dudes were like, yo, like, cut that shit out. Like, that's some Chicago shit. Stop bringing right. that shit to LA. Right. When, coming from your background, when you hear this type of thing, uh, how do you feel? I'd I, I be pissed off. I just think don't nobody got respect no more. And like I said earlier, regardless of where you're from, come on, man, that's one thing we didn't touch back then. We didn't tap on the dead, and we didn't touch the church. Mm. We had respect. These cats writing on the church, these cats, it's totally different from our days. So don't nobody really care got having respect about the dead. 
and and it just it rubbed me the wrong way. I hate that. If you if you can talk about the dead and and disrespect the church, why the fuck are you here? Why are you breathing this air? Yeah, I mean, I've heard a lot of stories about. Uh, I mean, I've actually interviewed people that that, that were sort of personally were involved in these things where like funerals would get shot up in places like like dc and chicago and stuff like that well we had i mean if you that type of person and got killed there's been incidents where churches the funeral then got shot up uh but i don't think it's just shooting the dead it's shooting because they know this is where these certain individuals gonna be yeah uh it ain't walking in just start tapping the casket no man come on they just don't care today. I, man, somebody got to tell them. Somebody got to show them. And, and, and they finding out the hard way that people with my age and, and, and right up under me don't like that shit. You know, it was so many people on them videos when they saw this little boy get killed in the car. And it was so many. And then it was crip dudes that really felt bad about where gang banging is gone now. And, and and really said, man, they disgusted behind the gangs of the day, you know, and, and it's, just, it's just sad that it's went there. You know, these cats don't, don't, don't understand. I probably don't even know what giving a pass is. With you, with, when you with your mama and, or your girl and your baby, that's a no-no. Hmm. These cats today will shoot you holding hands with your baby and your girl. They just don't have respect. Yeah. So that's happened in your day. Yeah. You've seen one of your enemies and they were with their family. I've seen my enemy and I, and matter of fact, one cat, me and Lee can't forget. Uh, I had him dead to right. Oh, what you saying now? That type of shit. Oh, in the name of Jesus, he pulled, I didn't shoot him because he pulled the Bible out on me. <laughs> I mean, it, it's funny today, but I have respect for the Bible. So because he pulled the Bible out. He pulled the Bible. Man, I ain't with that no more. I ain't doing that. And right after this interview. So he had a Bible on him. He had a Bible in his driver dash. In the, okay, on his dash in the car. Okay. And he grabbed it and he just, man, no, man, I, I ain't with that. I ain't with it no I ain't doing that. And because you got that Bible, I'm going to give you a pass. But if he didn't have that Bible in his windshield, in his in his car, he wouldn't be here. Well, and neither might you be. You might no, be doing. I'll be here because you might they, be doing life in prison right now. Nah, I wouldn't. Nah, when I I had him dead to right, walk away, no problem. If I'd have went to jail, that cat out there would have told on me. That's the only thing that's gonna send me to prison. I caught a cat at the at the store. He with his mama. You got to pass. And that's all it was. And and he did just like this. Right. I he flips you off even though. Yeah. I've got a pass before. Oh, really? A couple of them. Because you were with who? With my daughter, my daughter's mama, Pamela. Okay. And with my first son, mother, at the uh, Vermont Drive-In. You with your girl, nigga, but Okay. That's how it go. That's yeah. how it went back then. You don't get that no more. You don't get that pass. Yeah. They don't believe in this shit. They they believe in what they say, putting your putting your face on a t-shirt and shit. Yeah. Um it's just it's just out of control right now. Well, here's my last question before I let you go. And uh, me and a close friend had a had a long conversation about this. You know, when when you look at any you know, any neighborhood where there's a lot of crime, mm -hmm. there's always these, this rule of, you know, no snitching, no telling, no talking to police, no cooperation and so forth. More often than not, though, is that when you look at things over time and the dust settles, usually the main guy usually ends up cooperating and telling on everyone else. Yeah, because of the time they're given. Right. That's his way out. 
Exactly. So when you look at, and, and you know, th- this is not an actual law or, or, you know, this is something that just people made up and they run with it. What's right? that? No snitching, no cooperating. Yeah. But when you really think about this, is it really just designed where the head guy uses that, the, 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 this, this, this make-believe concept in order to protect himself? And ultimately uses that to sacrifice the people un- underneath them. In a because sense, in do, a do, sense. Do, do you see where I'm going with this? Yeah. Do you see where I'm going but with this? But they they took the they took the concept of snitching to a different level. Everything you do, standing next to a police car, you must you got to be snitching. Back in the day, snitching was seeing that paperwork. You know, you can't just call a motherfucker snitch. Trust me, I know. You can't just say, oh, that motherfucker a rat. You don't have no papers. You don't have nothing to say that this motherfucker told on me. Today, the police use it because they know if they tell you, I'm going to give you, you finna do 17 to life, you ain't going to get your accuser on the, stay, on the stand because they copping out and pleading and taking deals. Mm-hmm. That's how it's so easy to get you because you don't want to go all the way. Right. So, but... Oh, the name that they use, that's the motherfucker. He snitched on me. How he snitched on you? A snitch is normally have to sit in the stand and say, yeah, that's him. Right. That's him. A snitch, your name have to be on some type of document from the police Mm -hmm. that you can obtain from your lawyer if a motherfucker told on you. They done took snitching to a whole different level. And there's so many different levels you can be labeled as a snitch. You don't have to go on the stand and say, yeah, that's him right there. Yeah. Or get that, sign your name on this paperwork. If you ever talk to a detective, you sign in your name. If you ever talk to the detective, you sitting there drinking coffee and eating uh, cookies. So the, the generation today believe everything that you do, you have to be a snitch or you have to this. Right. But you have to have paperwork or that dude have to actually go to court on you. But, but, but like I said, it, it just seems like when you look at it at a high level, you know, it, it almost seems like a like a a way that, you know, that you use to sort of deceive everyone who ends up working for you. Because all these, you know, if you got a guy in the neighborhood who's like the kingpin, Right, and he's supplying all the drugs. He, he's the one that's moving millions of dollars through him, and so forth. He he's keeping a lot of the money for himself. Yeah, everyone else gets their piece, and so forth. All these dudes get caught up, and they don't want to snitch on him, even right. though even though they could probably just get us. They didn't really even do much right. compared to what he's doing, you know. But he's convinced all them not to cooperate. In order to save him. What well, a street code. Is yeah. Loyalty. Loyalty. All these guys underneath him don't cooperate. But when he gets caught, most times he cooperates and drags everyone down with him. He the main one. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, it, so you're it, protecting it someone time. who most times won't stand up and do the same for you. Right. Right. Your loyalty is in the wrong place. You, you know, so, 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 so the whole thing of it, man, is just like, and, you know, and, and I know people that are that stood by and they've done all this prison time. They're so proud of themselves for not for not doing it. And, and, I, and I wonder also, you know, how much of them, you know, when people don't snitch, how much of that is integrity versus fear of if I do and it's found out. That I'm just scared of the repercussions of people finding this out, as opposed to. 15% of that is fear. The rest of it is, you know, pretty much. I I want to show the homies that I'm loyal, that I'm that I'm down with it. I'm 100, and there's a lot of men in prison because they took the fall for a certain individual. And that's what I'm saying. And 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 you're taking the fall for someone, and by doing that, you're ultimately choosing this man over your own family. And if you have children, you've now taken away their father. But they understand that, though, Vlad. The, the, the cold part about that is is that every man that's from the hood, living in the hood, knows if he do this, he can't come back to the hood. He right. can't be a part of this 
or that 15% chance of me getting killed. Yeah. If that I too. did that. And, and on top of it, when you really put the, when you wrap it all up, when you go and you don't tell and you do your time, when you come out, there's there's rarely any sort of real reward. Oh no, there ain't no rewards. You see what I'm he's saying? still doing his thing and he gonna look out for you. The only reward to that is is oh that's a big homie, he's solid. Right. Right. You don't get no there, there's no, no there's no big pile of cash no. when you come out. No. Uh you know, does your family get taken care of? No. Some you, some, but it's not like the mafia that actually, put, no. you know, really, really does that. No, there's you know some brothers I mean? out there that do take care but, of the family and that individual. And and but, let me tell you, man, every drug kingpin I've ever talked to has always been the same story. It is. They 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 had a bunch of money, you know, going in. They put, you know, like Freeway Ricky put put a bunch of property in other people's names. When he got out, it was still in their names, and they're not trying to sign it over. Right. All the money he put, he put aside. Well, these people had bills. They figured he, he, he's got life in prison. He's never getting out. They need it more than he does. Right. That money's gone. You know what I mean? And it's like, there is no reward for this. And I just feel in, in a certain type of way, and they're going to say, oh, Vlad's advocating snitching. Well, I just want people to look at it realistically because it's your life. And I feel it's a mind fuck to a certain degree. Well, it's a mindfuck because a lot of a lot of people don't understand it. A lot of people was has fallen under the propaganda that they be told today that you know snitching is this and snitching is that, which that's not what snitching is. You know what I'm saying? So you got cats that believe their loyalty yeah. will get them here, which is don't get us nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Doing time. You can't call me a snitch. How's this lady a snitch? And she told the police that she saw this young man kill her son. Right. They label her as a fucking snitch. How the fuck is she a snitch? So they 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 going ass out backwards and and they actually believe in the bullshit that they they've been taught and told. Right. And, and it's all bullshit because no. once it gets to the court system. All of it gets thrown out the window. No, the, the 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 judge don't care about it. The prosecutors don't care about it. And Long if you can't get you, yeah. And if you can't afford a great lawyer, you ass out. Anyway. You're, you're asked out. You're and you know you're 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 pleading to some shit that you may not have even done. Right. Just because you're too scared of the big number they're throwing at you if you blow trial. There's a lot of us in prison be behind that. Yeah. That whole concept. So. Yeah. You know. Yeah, man, and you know, and, and it's sad. I, I remember BG Knockout even even said that he realized at one point that while he was sitting in prison, that he had to ask himself whether he loved his gang more than his own family, right, and more more than his own children, because he's choosing the gang over his kids, right. The thing that I try to, you know, the thing that bothered me about my own situation was like, yo, I had to think about. I had to question like if I loved my my kids and my family because like why would I leave them to to come to a place like this you know and that's the thing that I t I try to talk to my young homies who are still in there it's like you watching your kids just grow up without you you know what I'm saying and if some what if somebody did attack your daughter or some shit and you can't do nothing about it because you were so loyal to something else you know what I mean it's like people got to snap out of it man here I am sitting in jail for this gang, and I'm not a father. Right. My kids are growing up by themselves. And, you know, you could say, well, you know, my mom it was my mom and my dad, but you know that's not true. Right. You know, like, like especially if you are if you have a little boy, that boy needs a, a male, a male uh, role as, model in his life. As a grown man, we, we, we make that choice. Once we get caught... We make that choice. Yeah. Nine times out of ten, they ain't gonna let you. They ain't gonna let you go because they know. So, if I choose not to tell on him, I know the consequences of that. I know I ain't finna see my family for fifteen years. But to be a big homie and solid and all that, you shut the fuck up. To to be to keep your name from being slung in the mud and shit, you shut the fuck up. Yeah. So that that's pretty much just. A street code. That's the way the street is. Yeah. And you know, 
is too many people in prison behind not saying this or saying that, and that cat ain't even taking care of your ass. Right. And, and let me tell you something, right? If you, you know, if you feel that this, you know, if you feel this concept is really rock solid and so forth, look at these multi-million dollar and billion dollar companies. When when those guys get caught doing some shit, right. they all cooperate. Right. There's no code right. in these billion dollar situations. Well, you see that with the Donald Trump shit. Right. They Everyone like turns money. on each other. <laughs> Everyone cooperates, whatever else. Right. You know, so so people making the real money, they go along with with the legal with the legal means. Right. And these guys that are all broke are sitting there with these imaginary ideals that are getting them fifteen years. Right. So so just think about that as you as you go along and, and, and you know think about your morals and values and everything else like that. I'm not advocating for snitching and so forth. I think on certain levels it is point blank wrong. You know, I mean if you're if you're involved in a crime and you tell on someone to try to get less less time by putting all of the blame on someone else, knowing that really you were largely responsible for it. Now that's that's where I feel it, it's morally it's morally wrong. In other words, you know. So, if, but if you act like Nino Brown, you're out of line. Right. Other than that, right. But but if you're just sitting there protecting someone because that's just the code, and I'm going to take all this time over some shit that I was barely involved in, you know, well, you, you're we ultimately. Had this thing. Grandmama told us, "Shut the fuck up." Never say nothing. Boy, you better stop being a tattletale. <laughs> T- don't don't tell on your brothers. And we grew up with that type of shit. You grew up with that. Yeah. 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 And, and you, you took it to the extreme. You know? Mob James, man. Always a pleasure. All the time. Uh, make sure everyone watches the Gangster Chronicles. Yes, sir. You know, one of my favorite podcasts. We doing good. Doing well. That's what it is. Until next time. All right. Peace.